Hey, I'm Charlie Wright. I'm a nephrologist, a kidney specialist. Uh, for 17 years, I took care of kidney patients, kidney transplant patients at Tampa General. Now, for the last eight years, I've been, take, I've been working with LifeLink of Florida as their medical director, trying to enhance organ donation and transplantation in the west coast of Florida. You know, transplantation has a way of almost always being in the news. I'm sure most of you over the last month have read the stories about the 11-year-old girl who needed lungs up in Philadelphia, and it seemed like she was falling through a, a crack in the allocation, and uh, her parents wrote a desperate letter to the Secretary of Health and got the message back, look, I can't intervene on just one person, but I'll have the committees look into it. Mm -hmm. um, and they were desperate parents, and so they took it to the courts, and they got a temporary restraining order. And the girl did get a pair of adult lungs that didn't work. And she got a second pair of adult lungs that did finally work. And she appears to be doing okay now. Um, but she's used up two sets of lungs. And they had to make special rules. And it's questions like this that bring transplantation to bring transplantation to the forefront, to the news, because they're interesting things to think about. And the real solution isn't saying, well, you get the lungs and you don't. The real solution is that everybody registers to be a donor. I mean, that's the solution. As long as we're rationing uh, rare organs, we will not succeed. Now, how does transplantation work? Um, heart, liver, lung, kidney. If you're developing organ failure, your physician will send you to a transplant center. In that transplant center, you'll have a multidisciplinary evaluation. During that evaluation, they'll make sure you could survive the surgery, that you'll be able to take care of the transplant, and that you will get better if you, if you get the transplant. Um, if any of you should ever have the need of transplant, or your family members should need a transplant, please remember this website www.srt.com. At this site are the results of every transplant center, every organ procurement organization, how many transplants they do and what the survival rates are, how many people die on their list. Across the country, 18 people die on the list each day. So there are deaths on the list. So it's important that if you should ever need a transplant, you have all the information, you're armed with that. I'm involved in organ donation. It's a remarkable place. It's where tragedy and miracles are co-mingled every day, every day. Um, when I'll get the first call about a potential donor after um, the donor's already been declared dead and the family has given authorization. And I got a call from a coordinator that could go something like this, that she has a 17-year-old who was walking home from the store on a busy road, the driver of a van was distracted, drifted over, and the rearview mirror struck her. She was helicoptered to the trauma center. She was taken to the operating room for decompression of the brain and removal of blood from around the brain. And after that, the surgeon had to tell the family all they could do was work on decreasing the swelling of the brain. And, and it was in God's hands. And overnight, the girl stopped moving. Her pupils stopped reacting. And she stopped breathing over the ventilator. And in the morning, the surgeon had a very difficult discussion with the family. That he believed she is brain dead and he would be doing testing. Now at that time, they called our coordinator to come down and evaluate the patient. Um, a couple hours later, the surgeon returned to the family, let them know that he had done the testing. She was, and had to give them the news that in their heart, they already knew that their daughter, their sister, their granddaughter died. And they cried, they grieved. And after about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, they come to the nurse and say, what next? That's when they meet the coordinator, who can discuss with them what's happened with their daughter, and talk to them about their daughter. And she was always a giving girl. And when she got her driver's license, she said she wanted to be a donor. And they honored that wish. Now is when the coordinator calls me, and now we change gears. Because everything done to prevent brain death, to prevent the swelling in the brain, has left that patient more dehydrated. She no longer has the brain that's integrating the function of her hormones and her blood pressure. She doesn't have a sympathetic nervous system anymore. So 
medicines to support the blood pressure is started. Hormonal therapy is started. Um, blood and lymph nodes are taken up to the lab in Tampa to do tissue typing and to do testing for transmissible diseases. By about eight hours later, it's midnight. They have the tissue typing back, they um, have the serologies back, and they start allocating organs. The person who is first on the list for the part the, the, in terms of most ill and most um, compatible with the organ was a 40-year-old man with two daughters who had been on intravenous drips at home to support his heart for the last eight or nine months. The heart surgeon agreed, and he'd get the heart. The sickest person in the region who needed the liver uh, was in Jacksonville with liver failure and also with kidney failure. So he was going to get a liver and a kidney with it. The kidney and the pancreas were allocated to a 47-year-old man who had had diabetes since he was a teenager and been on dialysis for the last three or four years. The surgeons and the coordinator worked together. They set an operating room time for 5 a.m. Shortly after 5 a.m., the surgery starts. By 6.30, the heart team is out of the operating room and on their way back to Tampa. By noon, the heart transplant recipient will be out of the operating room and in the ICU. The liver patient is going to have a much harder day. Their, that team will be putting the liver and the kidney in until midnight and then have a very difficult night of recovery from an incredibly difficult surgery. The kidney pancreas surgeon will be out of the op patient will be out of the operating room probably by 9 o'clock at night. By midnight, the insulin drip will be turned off. By the time of the girl's funeral, the heart recipient is walking around. No oxygen, free of all encumberments for the first time in over a year. The kidney pancreas recipient is um, free of dialysis, doesn't need insulin. You almost have to take away their glucometer so they don't check their finger all the time to see what their blood sugar is. Um, the liver patient was still in the ICU at that time, but he did recover completely. Now, three months later, these patients are essentially well. They're getting labs done every couple weeks, seeing their doctor maybe once a month, and essentially leading a normal life. And you can say, well, gosh, that's a miracle. It's not. That's the accepted medical outcome. That's what you expect to happen. The real miracle, the real miracle is the donor family. Because at a time, the darkest day of their life, the darkest day, they had the generosity to honor the wishes of their God. And what happens with no thought to themselves, two to three months later, they develop a sense of peace. They develop a sense that their daughter has helped others. She's more than she was. And it brings some sense to that tragic loss. And that's the real miracle of transplantation and donation. We want those accepted the expected medical outcome. But the miracle is amazing. And you can do that. And I hope you don't have to. But I would ask that all of you take a look at the website, the next slide. And if you haven't signed up the last time you got your driver's license done, go to the website. And if you're in another state, you can go to the Donate Life America site and see what's you, in your square in your state, you can go to sign up. And if you can't remember, just Google Donate Life America and you'll find it. And you can sign up anytime you want. And this is how each person here can be part of a miracle. Thank you very much.